So these are the 10 highly valuable objects in history, throughout history, that have been lost or stolen. Number 10, the Florentine Diamond. Its 1918 value was $750,000. Now, the exact history of this diamond isn't really clear, but it is definitely believed to be of Indian origin. Its last known owner was the Habsburg royal family. And before then, definitely the Medici's owned it. In fact, when it was in the treasury of the Medici's in Florence, that's when it got its name, the Florentine diamond. So what happened was in 1918, the Habsburg Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, lost in the First World War, right? So the family was deposed, the royal family, and what they did was they took their treasure, all their treasure, including the Florentine diamond, and they put it in a bank vault in Switzerland. And it's since then that the history of this diamond isn't really clear what happened next. It's believed that it was stolen and the prime suspect was the lawyer of the family itself, the guy who was supposed to take care of it. But really what happened after that is not very, very clear. The only idea people have is that probably it was taken to South America where it was cut into tinier pieces. Number nine, Sappho's poems. Sappho was a Greek poetess who lived in the island of Lesbos between 630 to 570 BC. And she's quite known for her lyric poetry. In fact, to this day, people adore the emotion in her poetry. Uh, she wrote nine volumes of poems, out of which most are lost. And the ones that we do find now, they are found on shreds of papyrus or super romantically on pots herds. So it seems like Sappho was quite the star in her time because her writing is frequently quoted in other sources. An early 20th century excavation in Egypt too turned up valuable fragments of her poems, but really most of her poems are really lost, or let's say waiting to be found. Number eight, Gibson Stradivarius. It's valued at $15 million. Any violinist worth his salt will tell you that Gibson Stradivarius violins are the best violins on the face of this earth. This particular violin, which he created in 1713, was one of the most valuable violins ever and it's been stolen twice. The first time it got stolen in 1919, but it was quickly recovered. Second time it got stolen in 1913 by a guy called Julian Altman. Altman managed to never get caught and it was on his deathbed in 1985. That's when he confessed to his wife that he's the one who'd stolen the violin. So she eventually returned the violin to the authorities and now it is owned by the top violinist Joshua Bell. Number 7. Picasso's Le Pigeon au Petit Pois. This is valued at $28 million. This painting by Pablo Picasso was completed circa 1911. It was on display in the Musée d'Art Moderne de la Vie de Paris, but in 2010, five pieces of artwork were stolen, and one of those was this painting by Picasso. The thief was caught in 2011, but the painting never came back. In fact, the idea is that the thief, because he panicked, he destroyed the artwork, and that's rather sad. So there's a chance we may never actually find it again. Number six, the Patiala necklace. This is valued at $30 million. The Patiala necklace, as the name suggests, belongs to Bhupinder Singh of Patiala, or let's say belonged to Bhupinder Singh of Patiala, the Maharaja of the Indian state of Patiala, in 1928. It was made by Cartier Paris. They received a special request which asked them to create a ceremonial necklace worthy enough for a king. So this necklace, because it was worthy enough for a king, had 2,930 diamonds and the centerpiece was the seventh largest diamond in the world, which was a 428 carat De Beers diamond. But in 1948, after India's independence, this necklace went missing. But since then, parts of it have been found here and there, including the De Beers diamond. Interestingly, in 1998, which is 50 years after the disappearance of this necklace, a guy called Eric Nussbaum, who used to work for Cartier, accidentally found remnants of this necklace in an antique store in London. Then Cartier bought the necklace and they restored it to its former glory, even though a lot of diamonds and Burmese rubies are still missing. Number 5. Fabergé eggs. This is valued at $33 million. 
The legendary house of Fabergé was at one time the largest jeweler in Russia and they specialized in taking everyday boring mundane items and turning them into exquisite pieces of art. Their most famous works are the Easter eggs which they created for the Tsars Alexander III and Nicholas II who famously and ritually gifted these to their mothers and wives. Each egg was a jewel-drenched exquisite piece containing a surprise within it. But after the Russian Revolution when the Romanov dynasty ended and all the chaos that followed, the new Soviet rulers they took the eggs and since then out of 50 eggs 7 are missing. Some were sold off, some were hidden away. Interestingly, the third imperial Fabergé egg is the only missing egg that has been recovered. And funnily enough, it was recovered in 2012 at a scrap metal dealership in America. Number 4. Cellini's Salt Cellar, valued at $65 million. And yes, it really is a salt cellar. It originally belonged to King Francis I of France and it was designed for him in 1543 by the Italian sculptor Benvenuto Cellini. So this ornate gold cellar is famously called the Mona Lisa of sculptures and you can see why. It was stolen from a Viennese museum in 2006 and the thief had hidden it in a lead box and buried it somewhere at an unlocated location in an Austrian forest but it was luckily found in 2006 so we have it back. Number 3. Vermeer's The Concert and this painting is valued at 200 million dollars. The concert was painted circa 1664 by the Dutch painter Johannes Vermeer, depicting a man and two women performing music. It remains one of the most expensive pieces of art that were stolen and that have not been recovered. It was stolen in 1990 along with some other pieces of art from the Stuart Gardner Museum in Boston. It's not recovered to this day and there's very little chance it ever will be. Number 2. The Hope Diamond valued at $250 million. Undoubtedly, the Hope Diamond is one of the most famous jewels in the history of the world. It is believed to be of Indian origin, where it was purchased by Jean-Baptiste Tavernier. It is believed to be carrying a curse, but that's mostly just a spicy story that sales agents created to generate the interests of buyers, that's all. The diamond was stolen from the French crown in 1791 during the French Revolution and after that it was given the name the Hope Diamond. You can now see it in the Smithsonian Institution. Number 1. The Amber Room, valued at $303 million. German sculptor Andreas Schlüter and Danish amber artist Gottfried Wolfram gifted this room in 1716 to Frederick, King of Prussia. It was clearly the best room in the Catherine Palace near St. Petersburg in Russia. Lavishly decorated in jewels and gilding and panels of amber, it aptly has sometimes been called the eighth wonder of the world. When the German army was coming for St. Petersburg during the World War II, the caretakers of the Catherine Palace knew that the Nazis will not leave the amber room alone. So, in their attempt to protect it, they hid the walls of the Amber Room behind a wallpaper. But sadly, the Nazis still managed to find the room. They took it out in pieces and took it to Königsberg. So, it was in Königsberg Castle for some time. But after the Second World War ended, the location of this room is not very clear. Some say it got destroyed in the bombing, but some people believe it is still hidden. Nobody knows. In 2003, a reconstruction of the Amber Room was unveiled in St. Petersburg so that people like you and me can at least go and get a feel of it. So, there you have it. Some of the most mind-blowing treasures of the world. Some lost, some found, some still out there.